So you want to start building stuff, but you're not really sure where to start, what tools you need, kind of how to get going down this path of uh, learning fabrication and modifying parts or building your own parts from scratch. Well, we're here to help you out. Today we're going to do a list of 15 tools and five bonus tools that as you've kind of developed some skills, they'll massively increase what you're able to do. So you've probably seen some other 10, 15, 20 tool videos kind of getting an eyeball and figuring out maybe what he recommends and he recommends and I recommend and finding the common denominators. We're going to go about it a little bit differently. We are going to build a winch plate and discuss the tools while we build it. So we're going to build a winch cradle for my friend, just like the one that's on my blazer Merle. <coughs> There's a full build series for this whole truck on my channel. <coughs> um, so we'll be cutting and adding pieces in, all that stuff. We'll get to it. If you haven't seen my bumper video, go check it out. So the very first thing you need when you're ever you're going to work around stuff like this is your personal protection equipment. Glasses, gloves, respirators, because there's going to be metal flying around or wood flying around, all kinds of stuff in the air, and you need to keep that out of your lungs and out of your eyes. You only have one set of lungs, you only have one set of eyes, or if you're like me, you only got one eye left. So, so don't be a fool, wrap your tools or your eyes with glasses. So first we got step one, we got our part. We need to find center on it because we're gonna narrow it and we want it to be centered while we're narrowing it. So this is gonna bring us to our first three tools. Number one is gonna be your phone. We've all got them. Um, you're gonna use this for uh, doing all your calculations, right? So you got the calculator on this. A lot of times when you're building things, you gotta jump between like fractions and decimals and you can just look that up on the internet, find like a decimal to fraction calculator or whatever, and uh, that'll give you your numbers. So invaluable tool is your phone. Next, you're gonna need to do a lot of measuring when you build things. So tape measures, squares, speed squares, all of these things you're gonna use all the time because you have to measure everything so that you do things in the right place. And so they fit. We're gonna use a tape measure for this. And then the third thing is you need to mark those down somehow. So Sharpies, paint pens, soapstone when you're welding stuff, scribes when you need to be extra precise. We're gonna use a Sharpie for this and we'll get to it. So his frame's 27 and three quarters of an inch wide. And this plate is 31 and three quarters of an inch wide. So we need to find center on that which you can use your calculator for if you don't do this in your head the more you do it the better you'll kind of get at doing that stuff in your head um which will be 15 and 7 8 is the center on that one so we're going to mark that around here at several spots so 15 and 7 8 now since his frame is four inches narrower than this we can also take two inches from each side and then we'll double check that from the center to make sure that all our marks are centered on this so you don't have a lopsided cross or a lopsided winch cradle. You can't really fit like a straight edge in here to make a nice straight line. So I'm not including this as one of the tools, although I guess it could be, is tape. So when you're gonna use it to make a nice long straight line, get a little bit thicker tape. That way it doesn't bend as much when you're putting it down as your cutting guide. All right, step two, we need to cut these ends off to get this down to the width. So that brings in angle grinders. Four and a half inch angle grinders. This is one of the cornerstones that you're gonna use forever and they last forever. So you can use your cutoff wheels, you can put flap discs on here, you can put grinder wheels on here, you can put, they make uh, like wire wheels type deals for it. These are incredibly versatile. 
So you're gonna use these a lot. I've been doing this for a long time. I still use this thing almost every day. Now we're gonna do a little bit more. We're gonna add our little angle cut to it. I think on mine I came forward, let's say about five inches. And that's our next tool. Basic hand tools. We're pretty much only going to use pliers on this, but you know, various different kinds of pliers, needle noses, flat noses, wrenches, crescent wrenches, screwdrivers, ratchets, all that stuff. You can get just kind of like a basic kit. I know every year like Home Depot has a big Husky kit on sale. It's like a hundred dollars and it's a little bit of everything and it's perfect to get you started. Uh, I'll put maybe like a picture of it up on the screen right now or something. But I'm sure Lowe's has something similar with their house brand. Um, Harbor Freight, any of those kind of like $100, $150 just general mechanic tool set type deals. That'll be perfect to get you started. Um, and if you have multiple vehicles, it's worth getting one of those just to throw like in the back of your truck so you got like a mobile giddy up with you all the time. I keep one in my blazer. So the next step is templating. So you can use poster board, uh, like from the 99 cent store. Uh, this is like that kind of straw board stuff. I have this around. Poster board works just as good. I guess you could kind of consider scissors as another tool, but I'm just going to rope it in with like template material because you're going to have to cut it out. And look at that. It's perfect. So we're going to cut two of these out and then we'll get to our next tools. And of course my littler piece is just barely not long enough, so I gotta crack into a bigger one with it, but let's use up this little piece. Cut this off of here. Clamping tools. Holding things together, or sometimes, like now, when you're cutting stuff, you can clamp it to your table. And now you can cut it without it wiggling and jiggling and falling all over the place. Also, with clamping things, I would include like various C clamps, vice grips, just all kinds of different stuff to kind of lock things down and lock things together. Yep, double check this one. Perfect. So this is the first of the extra tools. The five that I was talking about is a shop press. I upgraded mine with an air over a hydraulic jack. I highly recommend that. It just makes your life easier so you're not pleasuring your jack all the time every time you want to use it. So highly recommend picking up a shop press. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. You can bend things. You can press bearings together, press crap apart. They're incredibly useful. So, we'll do these one at a time. And we're gonna sneak up on this bend and get it to where these fit correctly. There we go. Couldn't quite see my line. perfect and so when you're bending stuff like this 
as you've seen me do on my own videos before, if you're not paying attention, you can bend it backwards, which is not advised. Sometimes you can fix it and sometimes you can't. Go. Time for the next tool. All right, so our next tool is die grinders. They're super, super universal. You can put scuff pads on them for surface prep and cleaning stuff up. This is what we're gonna use on here to clean off that mill scale so that it's ready to weld. They've got extended reach ones, regular short ones, you can put the burr bits in them and all that. They also make these battery operated. Um, so if you don't have a compressor, you can get the battery operated style and they work good too, but I have a big compressor, so I have a lot of air ones. First things first though, these are quarter inch plate. So I, yep, quarter. So I am going to bevel both edges of this so that we get nice good penetration and then we'll prep these surfaces with this tool which is basically a, a spinny scotch bright pad they work great for taking this junk off but not removing a lot of the base material so let's get these ready to weld on here all right now that my compressor shut off uh, that little scotch bright wheel is not quite tough enough to get this mill skill off to where it's good and clean. It was perfect for this. These pieces, it's a little bit heavy, so we're going to do some sandpaper. But it made me think of something. If you haven't used one of these angle grinders very much, you've got the nut that goes on it, and one side has like a lip on it, and the other side doesn't. So this lip side is when you put like like a hard stone on I don't know if you can see it in the camera but you see there's like a gap in there and this is meant to go in that gap and pinch it down so that this doesn't wobble but if you put on like a cutoff disc or a flap wheel it's pretty much flush so if you put it with that notch down it'll make it wobble because it won't tighten down properly. So pay attention to which way you put your little lock nut on. Just a little tip if you're new to these, if you've used these before, then you already know all about that or you've exploded a disc and now you know all about that. All right, and then we're gonna clean it. Because we gotta weld this thing together and everything welds better when it's clean. See, all that crap. Welders don't like chomping through that if they don't have to, especially TIG welders. And we're gonna TIG weld this. All right, that brings us to welders. Um, I have three, you don't need three welders. This guy is the first welder I ever got when I was 18, so I've had this thing for about 25 years. Uh, runs on 110. I leave it set up for doing real thin steel sheet metal type stuff. So it's got thin like 023 wire on it. And then TIG welder. If you get into TIG welding, make sure you get one that does AC. Um, that way you can do aluminum and, and anything like that. Even if you don't think you're going to do it, it's really not that much more money to get one that does AC. And then my big MIG welder for doing frames and, and heavy duty stuff that the little guy just just won't chomp through. So I'm going to get this set up, I'm going to get under the hood and we're going to talk a little bit more about welding while I get this thing tacked up. So if you're wanting to learn how to weld and you don't really know where to start and you don't have any friends that weld, what I would suggest honestly is looking up your uh, local community college and they probably have welding classes um, and it's a great place to start because you'll get exposure and you'll get to try out 
uh, MIG welding, TIG welding, maybe gas welding, depending on your college and if they have it and if it's part of their intro class. But if you sign up for one of those intro classes, they're cheap. You've got a teacher and you have like unlimited practice materials. So you can kind of try them all out and see, number one, do you even like it? And number two, what processes do you like? What are you naturally good at? And it'll give you a lot more to go off of um, just to start so that you'll have a better idea maybe of what you're going to look for in a welder. You know, is it something that you love and maybe you want to get a better welder right away? Um, or, you know, I don't know. Just It, it gives you a good a good intro because if you want to build cool stuff you're gonna have to learn how to weld no this isn't a tig glove this is just a regular old glove because this thing's stinking hot go like I was saying he just wanted his tack together in case he needs to move anything this is going on a blazer that's gonna be linked front and rear with like a high pinion 60 in the front I think a 14 bolt in the back so we're all done for him all right well that about does it but we didn't quite cover all the tools that I was talking about so we're gonna get those right now because we didn't need everything to build this I would recommend some hammers uh, to start some sort of ball peen because you're going to need to hit stuff some sort of a dead blow uh, if you need to hit stuff and not mark it and these little mini sledges are fantastic for moving crap the other thing i would definitely say that you need to start are tin snips um, for doing any sort of sheet metal stuff that you're going to do these are great for cutting it out you're going to need to drill holes so you can wait for them to be on sale. They always sell little double sets of like an impact driver and a drill around the holiday season. Pick whatever brand you want. They're all good. You know what I mean? I use Milwaukee because I have a bunch of Milwaukee batteries. So if you've got DeWalt, get DeWalt. If you want Ryobi, get Ryobi. But I recommend sticking with one battery system so you don't need 18 different chargers and 500 batteries. You can just get all your all your electric stuff like that that works together um and then as i've said in my other stuff spring punches for mark and center for drilling these little spring guys are the best kind these are my favorite uh, for the more advanced tools um, if you start getting into doing any sort of decent amount of electrical one of these power probes is a game changer it's uh they're amazing and then i would always recommend stepping up and getting some sort of vice to hold things and then if you're getting more into sheet metal and making panels and stuff like that uh, a bead roller is great and combined with the press that we mentioned earlier those kind of 20 things 2021 20, somewhere around there is a great place to start and then those bigger tools are a great place to step up into and you can do damn near anything with uh with that combo of stuff and then as you go you'll kind of feel out what you need what's missing and the number one tool i saved it for last because it's the most important is your mindset your creativity and being able to like take this for instance look at this for what it was meant for a tube buggy and be like, oh, I can narrow that, I can plate the sides, I can make that fit my application. Because that's half of what it is, is just seeing what you want in your head and turning it into a real thing. So with that, that's my, that's my list. And I think it especially applies here. If you don't get started, you're never going to get finished.